What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction. Back with some more Mad Caddies. We're going back to the 2003 album, Just One More. And we're up to the tune, Last Breath. Uh, I don't know whether we're talking a terminal breath, literally the last respiration of a biological creature. Are you coming over the top? What's going on here? Sometimes she comes over the top. Yep, she comes. Um, well, you're going to have to make a decision at some point. What is it? Technical difficulties. No, nope, she's getting. Nope, nope, what? Do you want to come under? Is that. What are we doing here? <laughs> so you want to sit on the. There was a lot easier way to do that. I have to point that out. Well, shenanigans aside, uh, whether or not we're talking about an actual terminal breath, it does make me think about the way people will use a phrase, do this to your last breath, or live in this way until your last breath, meaning um, a principle or a behavioral program um, that is deemed desirable or admirable for one reason or another. Um, and so the idea of sticking with that or maintaining that standard, um, that's what it does make me think of. Now, again, it could be about that moment, um, you know, the last moment of being alive. Now, again, this could be more conceptual. It could be the, the last breath of a relationship or the last breath of a phase of your life before you change a number of things or move to a different place. I feel like there's a number of ways you could go with it, but um, last breath, whether we're talking more, you know, analogical or figurative or more uh, preternatural or uh, metaphysical, it's a transitional moment, right? It's a, a moment um, where one phase of reality or being um, gives way to another. So let's find out what that might mean for the Mad Caddies. This is the Mad Caddies' uh, last breath from Just One More 2003. I'm glad Luca is finally in position. Here we go.
stomping. There would be some skanking, I feel, in that last part. Um, yeah, top tune. I. It sounds like someone who has a lot of self-revulsion, someone who doesn't like the way they've been behaving. I was thinking he was maybe an alcoholic at first, because he was like, oh, that wasn't me last night. Yeah, it's like, again, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, the, what is his name, Robert Louis Stevenson, I believe he insisted that it was Jekyll. Um, nevertheless, uh, yeah, it makes me think um, that there's some aspect of his behavior that he reviles, and therefore, like, whether it's because of just, you know, continuing in that to excess to the point where it'll be the end of him, or perhaps because he's moving to clean up his act and act in whatever way that may mean, or at the very least stop doing the things that he's doing, which make him feel, you know, so embarrassed in front of other people. So, um, yeah, again, I can't tell whether it's more figurative or literal. Um, but yeah, if he's aware he's taking his last breath, then something is going to change. He'll either die or he's going to move away from this cycle that he's been locked into. So, um, yeah, I love the Sonics. It, it was a more, um, you know, less, let's say, rip-roaring punk tune and more of a, just a proper ska track. Um, and yeah, I love the, the, the swagger of the horns in a couple different sections there. So... Another top tune, uh, really enjoying this group. Um, like I said, I got their cover album first because it was like, oh wait, someone's covered a propaganda tune? Like, you know, that's a pretty rare thing. Um, so I was intrigued by that and I found out, oh, there's a cover of an Operation Ivy tune, um, which again, if you haven't heard their cover of um, Sleep Long, uh, I do highly recommend checking that out, you know, whether in my reaction or just um, the, the proper track, because um, it's such an interesting tune, and it really, like, it's admittedly, it's 15 years later than this album, so it's, you know, jumping ahead in time a great deal, but like I said, if you haven't heard that, and especially if you know the original, if you know the Op IV original, which is already a fantastic tune, shout out once again to Jesse Michaels for his writing, um, I would recommend you check that out, but... Like I said, enjoying hearing this early 2000s album of a group that I never knew about until uh, recent times. Um, and once again, shout out to both Ryan and the user Scott Punker for um, suggesting that, yeah, this is worth going down. Um, so the next tune when we come back uh, will be Spare Chance, question mark. Uh, intrigued by that phrase. Uh, you know, you got a spare chance lying around anywhere? You know, do you, do you have someone in your back pocket? Um, I'm, I'm curious. Um, Oh, I'm wrong. Let's <laughs> see, because it makes more sense, right? It's spare change. Um, nevertheless, I'm going to blame my brain not working on Luca here, which is entirely unfair. It has nothing to do with her, but ultimately, um, you know, you try to pass and deflect um, responsibility for your brain not working correctly when you can. Uh, do let me know what you think of this one, and Luca, the crazy sleeping kitten, and I will see you next time. Peace.